Welcome back to the channel. This is Wes. Longtime viewers and subscribers will know I put out a call to action last week asking for the most cringe comic book page you've read in the past 30 days. And we got a lot of submissions, like 250 viewers replied to the message itself. I think we got a good 30 to 40 legitimate submissions, and I picked out the very best of the best, the creme de la cringe, if you will. And definitely, if you're not subscribed to the channel, definitely subscribe because you don't want to miss out on any of these amazing videos that I'm doing right here on the channel every single day, twice a day. Today, I'm bringing you four of the most cringe-worthy comic book pages released in the past 30 days, two from DC, two from Marvel, and then I have a bonus cringe page that someone brought up in the submissions from over 20 years ago from a writer that you wouldn't expect to be on this list with like a Stephanie Phillips and a Megan Fitzmartin. But even the greatest comic book writers in the world do have bad days. Unfortunately, no one was able to beat this gem from Gabby Rivera and America Chavez. I included this with the message in the community tab. And this is without a doubt the most cringe page in the history of comic books. America Chavez, we have Hawkeye watching on saying, I'm literally intrigued and in awe of both of them. If this is what it's like to date other women, then I applaud all women dating women right now because this is incredible. But that sets the bar like really, really high. And I say the viewers absolutely rose to the challenge with some of these submissions. Now let's get into what I consider the worst comic book page published in the last 30 days. Harley Quinn, number 18 from Stephanie Phillips and George Duarte. And shout out to Critic Clips and Maria Salazar for recommending this page. This is what I absolutely had my eye on. I knew the viewers weren't going to let Stephanie Phillips and this absolute doozy slide by them. We have this character talking to Harley Quinn. I bought this house in an attempt to rethink my own legacy. I spent years trying to follow in the shadows of someone else's vision, wearing a costume to fight a war that wasn't mine. See, you can shoot Joker in the face, but it's much harder to shoot issues like homophobia or systemic racism. And this, folks, is why DC Comics is failing across the board outside of Batman. And we're even seeing some of this type of propaganda, agenda-pushing nonsense creep into Batman itself. The worst part about this, obviously, this character is not speaking to Harley Quinn. We all know that Harley Quinn is presented in DC Comics as basically being a semi-functional, retarded character. Yes, yeah, she is stupid. But that character is not talking to... Harley Quinn, that is Stephanie Phillips talking to you and I because she also thinks we're retarded. Obviously, this speaks to a much larger issue within comic books and specifically DC Comics that this page and that specific moment of dialogue would ever make it through editorial. There is an editorial crisis at DC and Marvel Comics, and that's how lame-ass shit like this gets into the comic book and just turns everybody off. The thing that Stephanie Phillips doesn't realize is we're all adults. The readers of this comic book are adult, actual functioning human beings. And we know that not everything can be solved with a gun or force of action. That there are some problems in society that are deeply rooted and it takes more than those types of activities to solve them. But she literally thinks that we're stupid or retarded. And this is just virtue signaling of the worst kind. It makes the writer look stupid. It makes the editor look stupid. It makes the publisher look stupid. It makes the comic book industry look stupid. And it makes comic book readers walk away in droves. That's the only way you can come away from a page like that. Why Stephanie Phillips is still working at DC Comics at this point, I'll never know. Did they sign her up to an exclusive for like $2.50 a month? So they're like, yeah, just put her on everything. I don't get it. But the proof is in the pudding. That lady cannot write a comic book to save her life. Now let's go over to Marvel Comics. Now this one isn't quite as bad. But it is pretty funny. We've got X-Men 92, House of 92, number two. My goodness, that's a lot of number twos. Steve Fox writing, Salva Espin on art. This was suggested by Yellow Jacket, so shout out to Yellow Jacket. Thank you very much for submitting this. It's one of the most cringe pages you've read in the last 30 days. For those of you who don't know, X-Men 92, House of 92 is basically the Krokoa story but with the characters and settings of the X-Men 92 cartoon series. So instead of Kitty Pride being in charge of the Marauders and going out and saving mutants around the world, it's actually Rogue. And not surprisingly, Gambit would like to join her boat and her crew. And he says, is there room for Gambit on your pretty new boat, Cherie? You know how to make a nice Cajun boy jealous. She says, oh, Remy, you know Charlie gave me this boat to help rescue mutants who can't make it to Krakoa on their own. You just distract me too much. Besides, you ain't got nothing to worry about with this crew, sugar. Remind me to tell you why Bobby and Lorna didn't work out. 
And of course, behind her is an all male, all gay team of marauders that are working for her that don't even notice these voluptuously wonderful double D's just hanging out there for all the boys to see. But Remy's got nothing to worry about because there are so many gay characters. Remind me to tell you why Bobby and Lorna didn't work out. Because not only is he gay in the X-Men comic book continuity, but he's gay now, I guess, in the X-Men 92 cartoon series as well. Recently, Doc and I had a pretty in-depth conversation asking, when did X-Men become weird queer fanfic slash fic within the comic book industry? It's kind of just that way now. It just is. I don't get it. I don't know why they've decided to do this, but there is no escape from it. You can go to the X-Men 92 comic book series that's inspired by the cartoon and you're not going to get away with it. And of course, Bobby's still got to be gay because he is the OG gay X-Men at this point. There were no gay characters in X-Men before Bobby Drake's mind manipulation at the hands of Jean Grey, according to Marvel Comics, apparently, in Jordan White. Absolutely cringeworthy stuff. But we've got something better from DC Comics. You knew I wasn't going to miss this bad boy. The viewers absolutely shouted from the rooftops. Wes, you need to cover Pride Tim Drake special number one. Megan Fitzmartin writing, probably the worst writer in all of comic books today. Belen Ortega as the artist. Shout out to Muhammad Bashimak and Shiani Kasari for recommending this one. I take back what I said about Harley Quinn number 18 being the cringiest page. Actually, this is the cringiest page. And I think this one actually could give that America Chavez page, a run for its money. We know they did the weird sexuality swap on Tim Drake. They aged him down to about 14 years old, which is really creepy in my opinion. The big problem, of course, is the history of Tim Drake and Stephanie Brown. They've essentially been together in comic books for decades at this point. People have seen these two together for a very long time. They like Stephanie Brown and Tim Drake together. So they decided to tackle the elephant in the room for Pride Month. And Tim Drake finally introduces Bernard to Stephanie Brown. And wouldn't you know it, Stephanie Brown couldn't be more excited. Tim Drake says, Bernard, sorry it took us so long. This is Stephanie Brown. Be cool, Stephanie. Be cool, Stephanie. Be cool, Stephanie. Because she's so nervous around Bernard. Stephanie, you're real. Tim told me so much about. Before he can get the words out of his mouth, she gives him an enormous hug and says, Hi, I'm so happy to finally meet you. This is the best day ever. Because what strong, proud, independent woman that's been in love with a man for the past I don't know, 10 years, wouldn't be excited to meet his new gay boyfriend. Of course, that's how life works. But this is so hollow and cringe and lame, and it does no justice whatsoever to Stephanie Brown at all and her history and who she is as a character. She should be pissed. She should stand up. She should be really upset with Tim Drake not hugging his boyfriend, declaring this the best day ever. Yet another example, like why is Megan Fitzmartin working at DC Comics? She can't tell comic book stories. We've seen that. You know, obviously go check out Dark Crisis, Young Justice. She can't write any believable dialogue and she can't write any stories that anyone could ever relate to because God forbid the girlfriend of Tim Drake be a little bit put out. She's legitimately a hero. There's a good chance she could actually kick Tim Drake's ass if she wanted to. She's probably got an ego. She's probably pretty proud of herself. Just such a weird take on the character. And this is why DC Comics is a destination for cringe comic books these days and not great superhero storytelling. Now let's get over to Marvel Comics. This is the last one. We did have the She-Hulk live action show debut on Disney+. Plus, So we've had a She-Hulk ongoing series more in line with what they're doing in the show from Rainbow Rowell and Roge Antonio. This is from issue number five. And special shout out to Lucas Green, X23, for recommending this one. I was actually unaware of this comic book page itself. But this thing is pretty ridiculous. We've got Jen Walters. She's at a park. And there's somebody playing on the sidelines. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Uh, what happens next, April? And April says, Jack jumps over a candlestick. You don't have to worry about him. He won't bother your kids, the lady says to Jen Walters. And she says, do you know them? No, but they're here in the park most days. She never lets him out of her sight. And she says, is she his caretaker? And the answer is, I suppose so. She's his wife. Ha ha. The lady is literally married to a 40-year-old man who can't remember the lyrics to Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick. And look at the art on this thing. It's not the worst thing ever, but when you look at the size of the head on that woman married to this big giant oaf, it's absolutely ridiculous. Look at her head. It's like three times too big for her own body. What the hell was Roji Antonio going for? 
So this thing is cringe on a few levels, of course, because he's a man. He's really just a man baby that has to be taken to the park by his wife who couldn't survive a day on his own because, haha, we all love, everybody loves Raymond apparently these days. Every husband is Homer Simpson now, but even a retard wouldn't want to marry a woman with a head that big. That thing is just abnormally enormous. I don't know what the hell Rose Antonio was going for there, but that's a bad page. Ugh. Is it as bad? As the Megan Fitzmartin, Stephanie Phillips stuff, absolutely not. But that stuff is creeping up on Gabby Rivera, America Chavez territory. Now, I said I was going to talk about a classic cringe comic book page. This one is an oldie but goodie. This is one of those pages that you wish that you would have forgotten. And I had forgotten it until it was brought back to my attention. Obviously, this isn't from the last 30 days. Bobby and Nicienza whiffs majorly with Kevin McGuire on art. JLA created equal number one. Thank you so much to Ollie by golly for reminding me of this absolute atrocity of a comic book story. If you have not read JLA created equal, every man on the planet is dead. There's been this weird radiation. There's only two men that have survived Superman and Lex Luthor. What is the world going to do? Well, it turns out there's a plan to repopulate it using Superman because, you know, you don't want to use Lex Luthor. But they don't know if Superman's radiation, because he's like stored it or whatever, is going to like kill the mom of the baby. So he gets Lois pregnant and she brings a son to term. And because of that, Wonder Woman breaks out this enormous vial and says, if Adam Kent shows no symptoms of the fall for one year, we have Cal's permission to begin repopulating the world. That thing is filled with jizz, not just any jizz, super jizz. That is Superman semen in that enormous, it looks like an urn. Is that what Paul Bear had all these years? He had Superman semen in the urn for Undertaker, and that's where he really got his powers? This story is just so god-awful. If you continue reading it, Adam Kent ends up killing Lois because he went to hug his mommy, didn't realize how strong he is, and he, like, kills her. Kind of like in the story of Mice and Men, but with a baby killing his mommy instead of a retard killing a, a rabbit kind of thing. But just this panel itself, this whole story is cringe. But this one panel and realizing that Wonder Woman is holding about, I would say, 160 ounces of super semen in her hands. And Clark Kent has given her permission to repopulate the world. And the Amazons apparently are going old school and they're going to have start having babies. That thing is absolutely atrocious. It belongs in the annals of the worst comic book cringe pages of all times, the creme de la cringe. Now, these aren't the only bad comic book pages. I've actually talked about some similar stuff in the past. Perch and I talked about the five worst cringiest pages that would make you want to read Brian Michael Bendis comic books again not too long ago. If you want some more cringe, if you want some more laughs, definitely check this out. And we might talk about Gabby Rivera, America Chavez, a little bit more in depth.